Tonight it's an MIAA playoff matchup between the Marauders and the Brockton High School Boxers. Rob Gray and Brian Merringer bringing you the action tonight. Belmont enters this contest ranked 25th in D1. After a 9-8-1 regular season, Brockton seeded 40th after a 10-6 run in the Southeast Conference. Brian, no common opponents among these teams. So what can we expect tonight? Well, you know, I always think that you have some nervousness in your first playoff uh, round of action. I, the biggest thing for me right now is can Belmont get off to a quick start? So when you're a traveling team like Brockton, you've got a considerable ride on the bus. You're coming up here. You might be a little bit, you know, a step slow in the beginning, and I think Belmont's got to take advantage of that. So one of the advantages about being the home team is you have a five-minute commute. The, the unfortunate disadvantage of something like Brockton is they have to travel 45-plus minutes to come up here. So I think for Belmont to get off to a quick start is most important. The other thing I'm looking forward to tonight to, to seeing is the midfield of Belmont. So, unfortunately, Sabrina Sauls is not here. I hope she's doing well. I know she's fighting a little bit of illness. I, I know that Mandy and Greg are probably watching this right now. We're sending them our best wishes. Uh, but Sabrina had just an outstanding season coming back from ACL. She's got a little bit of an infection right now, and she's going to miss tonight's game. But I thought she might have been MVP of the Middlesex League, and so it was a big, big shoes to fill in the middle of the um, in the middle of the field tonight. So I'm interested to see how the midfield reacts without Sabrina being in there. Rockton kicks off. Rockton in white, right to left on your screen. Belmont. Marauders in maroon, and yes, the Marauders would love to have Sabrina Sauls back. Marinelle sends it long for Zika. She's got wheels. It's a foot race. Ridden off the ball by the Brockton defender. It'll be a goal kick. And I like that. It's an initial through ball to put some pressure on the defense. Um, we've had the pleasure of watching Danica all year. She's got incredible speed and incredible finisher, and I like that they sent the ball right to her. Let's see what the backs from Brockton are going to be able to give you, and uh, I think that's a, a matchup we'll be watching all night. Belmont has Zika and Duffy up front in their 4-4-2 formation. Hannah Glavin back to Emily Duffy. Brockton wins it. Also on the back line for Belmont, Kiki Hosepian and Lucy Cabril. In the midfield for Belmont, Bridget Gray, Lena Marinell, Sarah Yu, and Evie Boaz. Sent in by Brockton. Cabril lets it run long. We'll have a Belmont goal kick coming out. Also in goal for Belmont, Yuval Galani. And we didn't know if Yuval would start tonight. She's been a little bit banged up. She's got a shoulder injury. And so she was kind of 50-50 before tonight. So it's uh, it's nice to see her out there. She's done a great job in the back um, this year. And I, although I know that they have Kate Grimble also and uh, Emily Donahue, who could have played, I think, your first few minutes of when you're in a kind of loser go home game you like to have the usually the goalie that's been there for primarily most of the season once again Lucy doing a nice job of letting the ball run so we get another goal kick by well, oh, I think it's a I'm corner sorry. kick it was off of Belmont head I think Cabrillo thought it was off of White so Brockton will have a chance here early Looks like uh, number 10, Hannah Vega, taking the kick for Brockton. Poked out by Belmont, but not cleared. The shot goes high over the goal. Brockton starting lineup. Number four, Skylar O'Connell. 17, Chiara Reynoso. 19, Bianca Reynoso. Number one, Marlis Wagner. Seven, Samantha Blanchard. 10, Hannah Vega. Number nine, Chelsea Bourne. Number two, Campbell Miller. Number eight, Alexander, Alexandra Manzueta. Number six, Annabelle Cheatham. And zero, number zero, Anya Olmsted in goal for the boxers. 
Rockton takes it down the line, cross in. Poked up by Belmont, but not cleared. Back to Brockton, sent in. Looks, Looks like, like we offsides. Offside over and back. Belmont will have a kick out. Senior captain Bridget Gray will take the kick. Sends it deep down the left side, sent back in by Brockton. Kept in by Brockton. They control it. Good through ball, cut off by Cabrillo and out. Brian, I think Belmont would like to get this ball on the ground and settle it out of the air, get some possession. They haven't been able to do that yet. Sent in by the Brockton player, long for a goal kick. Now a little bit of a feeling out process, I feel, for the first few minutes. I was hoping Belmont might be able to come out a little bit stronger. So right now, it looks like Brockton's controlling a little bit more of the pace of the play. Galani kicks it long. Marinell on it, now Zika. Nice turn, but cut off by Skyler O'Connell for Brockton. McHugh sends it long. Belmont advances, throwing Brockton territory. Sarah Yu on the throw, Marinell. Heavy yeah, Boas wins it back for Belmont. Zika has it, tries to turn, double team. Hannah Glavin sends it long. Good flick on header by Marinell. Duffy tries to collect it. But sent out of play by Bianca Reynoso for Brockton. Giuseppe and cuts it off. She wins it. She's still got it. Finds a pocket that Sarah Yu is sitting in. But the through ball is cut off. Gray sends it long. Zika has it. Duffy running on. She's got one person to beat. Brockton gets back and does a good job shutting it down. Marinell has it at the top of the 18. She shoots. But collected by the Brockton goalie, Olmstead. Through ball from Boaz to Duffy. She's got room in the corner. Good recovery by the Brockton defender to send that out of bounds. So far, Brockton looks like they're pretty well disciplined in the back and pretty organized back there. Doesn't look like anyone's got really free. Gray tries to get the cross up with the left foot, but can't get enough on it. She's got it on the sideline. Boaz to Hosepian. Sent in, but a white shirt's on it. Now Marinell. Good job controlling the ball. Josepi into you. Now Brockton has it, it's one on four. Belmont wins it back, but only briefly. Brockton's got a three on five. 
cut off by Hosepian. Duffy's got it to Marinell, looking long through to you. She's on the ball, turns the corner. Nice cross, but it goes across the goal mouth and Belmont couldn't quite get on the end on that. Good chance for Belmont, best chance they've had tonight. No, definitely. A great run by Sarah Yu into space, able to get the ball there, be able to cross it. Um, you know, no one on the far post yet, but, you know, it was the first real good scoring opportunity by, I think, either team here tonight. Bianca Reynoso on the goal kick for Brockton. Belmont would like to keep it in Brockton's end and get some early pressure. Pretty even match so far, back and forth in terms of opportunities. Again, Belmont in maroon, the Brockton boxers in white. We have 30 minutes remaining in the first half here from Harris Field on the campus of Belmont High School. MIAA play-in game. Number 25, Belmont against the 40th seed, Brockton boxers. Long throw, Duffy tries to run it down. But cleared out by Brockton. Another Belmont throw coming up in the corner. Q sends it back in. You can't quite get a handle on it, but keeps fighting in the middle. A nice ball here. I'm not sure the box, the boxer could get to that, but it was a nice, nice through ball attempt there by Brockton. Yeah, that was Manzueta who won the ball back from you. Dangerous ball in. Yes. Galani comes out. The Brockton. Player got a shot off, a good chance for Brockton. That was Marlis Wagner, number one. Uh, dangerous for Belmont. That was one of those through balls where you got it, I got it, and it ended up being the Brockton player, Wagner, who got a shot on the ball, but it was a couple feet wide to the right. Short yeah, kick they from got a Belmont. Lucky right there. Sure did. Belmont tries to play out. It's another turnover, though. Hughes got it, good ball through to Marinelle. She sends it long right away. To a Brockton player. Hosepian battling down the left side. Cleared out of bounds by Brockton. They'll reset as Belmont takes the throw in. I'd like to see a little bit more off ball movement by Belmont. It seems like everyone is a little stationary. Yeah, it seems like Brockton's winning the athletic battle going to the ball. So Lots far, cross in from Gray. Zika tries to get a handle on it, but is stood up right away. Nice win by Sarah Yu there in the midfield. Marinelle's got it, sends it back. McHugh nice back to Marinell, back to McHugh, takes a move outside, good recovery from the Brockton defender to cut that off, Wagner. You had her, Boaz will try and win this, now Gray will try and win it, she does, sends it long, Zika tries to get on the end of it, she's into the 18. Gets banged off the ball by the Brockton player. No whistle. Some tough defending there. I thought some good defending there by the Brockton player. Belmont throw deep in the boxer's end.
You can hear the coach asking for his players to have a little bit more movement. Marinell, she'll take a shot from outside the 18, but it's high and over the goal. But I hear the uh, I hear Jemmy talking about getting some more movement, more movement off the ball, and I do feel like right now it's kind of stationary from place to place, and I think they need to start having a little bit momentum into their passing. That's Belmont head coach Jemmy Conje. Brockton is coached by Rolando Lopes. Or Lopez, I apologize if I had that pronunciation wrong. Boaz heads it. Yu tries to track it down. Can't quite keep a handle on it. Yu oh. stays with it. Almost gets it through. It's out of bounds for a Belmont throw. Zika tries to get some pressure, she does. Played out of bounds by Brockton. Throw in from McHugh to Marinell. Zika. Can't quite get it. Another Belmont throw, a lot of Belmont throws deep. They can't quite capitalize. We've got a substitution for Belmont. Into the game, number 22, Anna Santos. At forward and checking out is senior captain Lily Duffy. That ball gets through. McHugh trying to run it down. She does. Nice job by Emily. Pressure by Belmont there. Marinelle's got it, looking for somebody. She can only go backwards. Long ball to Santos, looking for Zika. It's off the hand of a Brockton defender inadvertently, no call. Sarah Yu has it, she's through. Goes for a shot, but it's wide right. On the Brockton squad, we have a fairly young team, eight freshmen, just six seniors and nine juniors, zero sophomores, at least according to my scorecard. Belmont's 26 players, 13 seniors, seven juniors, five sophomores, and one freshman. Anna Santos right there drawing a foul. That's one thing Anna's going to give you off that bench is a lot of energy. She's not afraid to be physical at all. So, so far this is a good attempt. You got Bridget Gray from 40 yards out right now. And we'll see if she's going to going to try score or just, nope, pass it out wide. Tamalee McHugh. It's a wide play. Cross from McHugh. Dangerous area. Tipped up by the Brockton defender, but right into the hands of the goalie. It's a nice cross from McHugh, but nobody from Belmont got on the end of it. It's a good opportunity in a dangerous area for that free kick. Belmont couldn't quite capitalize. No, I thought it was a, a great play. I thought Bridget did a nice job of getting it out, and I thought it was a great cross, but unfortunately, no one was in the middle to apply a little pressure. Brockton does a good job to clear that out with Zika putting on a lot of pressure. Yu wins it through to Zika. But cut off by number 19 for the boxers, Bianca Reynoso. She's done a lot of good cleanup work in the defensive zone for Brockton thus far. Pass back, cross from Yu. Cut off by McHugh, tries to send it back in. It's a spinner. She's battling. Physical game here tonight. Marinell has it. She'll send it back. McHugh tries to send it through straight in to the head of number one for Brockton. 
Nice shot by Anna Santos coming back for the ball. So we've got 21 and a half minutes remaining here in the first half, 0-0. Zero, zero. Belmont in maroon, the visiting Brockton boxers in white. You know, when he said that he was the Glavin looks for Gray, can't quite connect. Now Boaz. I'm not sure Jimmy's calling over um, Danica. I think he wants to give her some, give a little instruction of where she's making her runs right now. That'd be my guess. It makes sense. Uh, Belmont's gotten some good through balls, but Zika hasn't quite been able to get clear on them. Some tough defending from Brockton. Throwing to Gray, she looks back to Hosepian, back to Gray. Let's see if they can switch it up here. Good track back by Brockton. Sarah Hughes got it and out of bounds. We'll have a boxer's throw. That's Kiara Reynoso on the throw. She now sends it in. Scooped up by Yuval Galani, the Belmont goalie. Long kick, Gray gets ahead on it. Santos tries to get on the end of it, almost wins it. And takes the foul. It is a foul, we'll have a free kick from Belmont at half field. Bridget Gray looking for Marinelle, but can't quite get it in there. You tips it. Santos running it down on the end line. Good job. Once again, nice job by the by the Brockton defender. I believe that was number eight, Manzueta. It's in the far corner, so I can't quite see the number for Brockton. Throw in from Belmont. Marinelle turns. She's got it. She shoots. Saved by the Brockton goalie, kicks it long. McHugh on the ball for Belmont, sends it back in. Now Gray settles it. Marinelle, nice through ball to you. Can she get there? Not quite, it's a goal kick. Better ball movement from Belmont in the middle. All right, checking in for Belmont is number 27, Sadie Taylor. Sarah Yu will come out of the game. I thought Sarah Yu had an excellent first uh, 20 minutes of the game. I thought she was real active. She had a great cross. I thought she gave you some really good minutes. They've gone to Taylor. They've moved her over on the left and put Bridget Gray on the right side. Masepian on the ball. Yeah, I little switch Sadie's for little Belmont. Yeah, I think Sadie's a little bit more comfortable on the left side. Back to Cabrillo, she sends it long, looking for Zika. Zika, good job to get her body on it. And a good recovery by Reynoso to send it out of bounds for Brockton. Gray in the corner to Zika, back to Gray, looking for the cross, she does. Headed out, back to Gray, she sends it to Zika. Working in the corner, it's a battle. Another throw in for Belmont. Gray to Marinelle. Cross for Marinelle, right to the penalty spot. Santos tried to turn on it, couldn't quite get there. Cross to a dangerous area though. I feel like Belmont's gotten some more um, more chances right now. They're just not they're just not finishing. They're not getting on the end of those runs yet. But I feel like it's breaking a little bit more, and I feel like it's been down on the Belmont end a little bit more. But it's still extremely bunched right now. If you can look, I think all 
22 players might be on one side of the field right now. And one of the things that I, I've noticed about Belmont over the last couple of games where they've played well is they've really been able to spread out. And I feel like they're a little bit bunched right now. Turnover at midfield. But Glavin's there to clean it up for Belmont. Sends it long. Santos, nice turn. She's working down the left. Cuts it back inside. Good play. Have it. She takes a shot. And it goes. And it goes and it's in. in. It's a goal. You know, it was so it was so interesting because the goalie didn't move. And so I literally thought it was just going out of going out of bounds. And it was one of those things where literally, I'm not sure the goalie saw it. It turns out it was a great beautiful shot by Santos. The goalie potentially screened and couldn't see it coming. We thought it had gone into the side of the net because the goalie didn't move. Uh, but Santos cut it across to the inside, made a nifty little move and just jammed it home on the near post. Belmont leads 1-0. And I think the goalie kind of, like everyone was looking for the goalie's reaction because even the fans like waited a minute and then everyone said, oh, it's a goal. Boom. So one nothing, Belmont. We're 24 minutes in, and Brian, you were right. Belmont, Belmont did settle down a bit and start to dominate a little bit in Brockton's side of the field, and eventually it paid off. But really a great individual effort by Anna Santos there uh, on that goal. Yeah, I mean, we've we've seen the Belmont girls in their last few games, and I think there's been a little bit more movement and a little bit better job of uh, passing. Great opportunity right here. Bridget Gray getting the ball up to Danica. Danica makes the move. She clears her cross. Oh, just misses. What a great cross. Well, it looks like a goal pick. Yep. You know, that was some great team play there. Gray did a great job to save it on the sideline, sent it long. Danica Zika made a really strong move deep and a, really a perfect cross back. Marinell almost slid it into the goal, couldn't quite get there, but a, an excellent chance for Belmont. Just about a minute from their first goal of this game, they lead 1-0 against the Brockton Boxers. 14 and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. Yeah, that would have been a huge goal if they could have gone up 2 nothing with about 12, 14 minutes left to go. Um, you know, I think the next the next goal obviously is huge. If Belmont can go up 2 nothing, then I really feel like they can control the great... That's Santos. Finish. The sophomore makes another good move. She takes it deep, sends the cross in. It's off of Brockton, and we'll have a corner kick. Belmont's first corner kick and another opportunity to score. Belmont's been much better this year on their corner kicks. Last year, I'm not sure they had more than one goal on their corners, and I think they've put in about five or six this year. A lot more plays this year than they had last year. Um, you know, I'm not sure what play has been called, but I know that Jimmy was calling out to see a certain play. This is Bridget Gray on the corner kick. She sends it short, it's a dummy run. Marinell shoots off the crossbar and not in. It's still loose in front. It's a battle for the ball inside the six yard box. And now we're gonna have an offside call. And Brockton will have a chance to reset and get the ball out. You talked about corner kick plays and Belmont almost pulled one off there, Brian. That, that was a great call. What was interesting was not knowing from this angle if the ball went in, it hit the, it hit the crossbar and dropped but the official was right on the line watching that. So I feel like the right call was, was made because you could actually see the position of the referee was right where he was supposed to be. Um, great opportunity, obviously. Kicked out by Brockton. Taylor on the ball for Belmont. Now a through ball. Chipped out by Cabrillo. Gray can't quite get there. Brockton has it. Gray tries to recoup and slow down the counterattack. Marinell has it in the middle. Out to Taylor. She's going to send it long. It's a spinner off the Brockton head. Belmont trying to keep the pressure on. Brockton here had their one nothing lead. 
Brockton fighting hard. They've done some excellent defending tonight. High ball in. Brockton has some numbers there. There's a dangerous ball. Oh. No call. There was a collision. The Brockton player went down. That was close. I think the Brockton fans were looking for a PK right there. I think it was the right call, but close. And I don't think you want to put yourself in the position right there where you're having to defend that way and where something, you're putting it in the hands of the official. So I think a good no call by the official, but a dangerous play nevertheless. Belmont's had a few of those bouncing balls around the top of the 18 that they just didn't clean up quick enough and gave Brockton some scoring opportunities. Brockton has had a few. Good win there by Marinell. Lena Marinell down the right side. It squirts through, but cleaned up by the Brockton goalie, Anya Olmstead. She'll punt it out, won by Evy Boaz. Controlled by Belmont. The goalie will scoop it up again. Punt out, Taylor has a chance to control it. She's got it down the left side, tries to send it through. And sent out by the Brockton defender. It looks like we've got a timeout. I, I believe be called by Belmont's coach, Jemmy Conje. 10.26 remaining here in the first half at Harris Field. Belmont Marauders, MIAA playoff matchup against the Brockton Boxers. It's been a close one so far, Brian. Yeah, I feel like Belmont recently has got a little bit better run of the play. I think they've done a, done a better job of putting pressure on uh, the Brockton Boxers. But I think in the beginning of the game, it was kind of a little bit disheveled. I would have liked to have seen uh, a little bit more ball movement by Belmont. You know, you talk about when you're coaching that when offensively you want to spread out and when you defend, you want to make sure that you pack it in. And I felt like when the ball transitioned from side to side, Belmont wasn't spreading out and then contracting. They were really staying in the same place. And I felt like that gave Brockton a little bit of an advantage. I think Brockton's done a good job. They've won a lot of the 50-50 balls. I think they're a, a physical team. And now I feel like uh, probably about seven or eight minutes ago, I felt like the momentum changed a little bit. Belmont was able to string together a little bit more passes. I thought their movement was a little bit better, and I felt like Brockton's a little bit on the back heel. So, um, you know, it's been a good 10 minutes, I think, for, for Belmont. I think they are the better team. And uh, I think if they're, if they're looking to advance tonight, they just need to make sure that they're doing some of kind of the basics that you need to do in the game of soccer. You mentioned it earlier, uh, Belmont has some injuries in the midfield. Of course, the senior captain, Kylie Merringer, uh, out for the season. Uh, also, Sabrina Salls, the senior captain, is out at least for this game. Uh, Belmont's had to patch and fill a little bit in the midfield. They maybe had a bit of a shaky start to this game, but they seem to have uh, collected themselves and they're controlling the play and some of the bouncing balls in the middle of the field much better uh, over the last 10 to 15 minutes or so. One of the things I really like is I think Lena's done a good job in the middle uh, where she's been able to control a lot of the balls and really play the way she's facing and being able to distribute. And I think the last four or five minutes, they've been able to go through the midfield a little bit better. So it looks like Brockton has uh, up front Marlis Wagner and Chelsea Bourne. Haven't seen any substitutions for Brockton yet. Good chance for Belmont here. Taylor has her shot blocked. Brockton may have made some substitutions during that timeout. 
but they seem to be sticking with their starting 11, as far as we can tell. Brockton looking to play it out, kept in by Anna Santos. Still loose, a long clear from Brockton. Flick on header, but nobody's there. It's just one player. Belmont will look to play out. Can they keep possession? Not quite. Brockton sends it long again. Nice turn and pass to the middle. It's difficult when you're playing the striker and you're the the last person and you're flicking the ball. There's no one to flick to. You're the last person. And I think you're they're trying to get maybe a break or, or something like that. You know, I think if you're playing high for Brockton, you need to settle that and hopefully get more people involved. Cross through. Almost a good chance for Belmont, but the goalie did a good job to come out and get it. Belmont seems content to keep at least three, if not four, back to keep that numbers advantage and keep Brockton outnumbered on the offensive attack. We've got an example of it here. A one on four for Brockton. So my guess is during that timeout is that the Belmont coach wanted to push Bridget Gray up a little bit more. It seems like Bridget on the right side is playing up more. So they have the two forwards, and it looks like they're trying to get some more of their midfielders involved in the action. Because I've seen Bridget playing a lot higher up since the, since the timeout. Santos has it at midfield. Gray's making a run through to the right. Santos. Oh, a nice idea. But that's what I meant. I think they're trying to push Bridget up a little bit more. I think that might have been the timeout to get the, the halfbacks to do a little bit more overlapping runs. Ball to Zika in the corner, double teamed. Sent out by Brockton. Gray will throw it in again. Zika tries to go back to Gray, but good play by the Brockton defender to jump it. Another Belmont throw, McHugh to Gray. She tries to send it in, Marinell. Post it up, back to Gray. Nifty move, back to Marinell. She turns, she'll shoot. It's off just the off the top of the crossbar. Nice turn and shot by Marinell. She's not been afraid to shoot from long distance tonight. She hit the crossbar on a corner kick play with her left foot. That shot with her right foot off the top of the crossbar. Uh, Belmont looking to capitalize and go up two to nothing with 6.45 left in the half, but it's only one to nothing. They've got some work to do. Goal kick through. New player on for Brockton. It looks like Number 23, Amelia Vieira, the junior. Thrown by Brockton in the corner. Another Brockton throw. They've got numbers forward now. Throw into the 18, headed up by Cabrillo. Gray has it, she sends it long. Zika on it, nice turn, she's free and clear. She's got Santos up front, but she's gonna keep it herself, big touch. She tries to get by, she's by number 19 for Brockton. But Brockton, good double team. Excellent teamwork by Reynoso. And Manzueta to shut it down. Brockton concedes the corner, but Danica Zika could have been through to the goal without some very good defending there. Gray on the corner for Belmont. She loops it in, long kick. Head on it, and a volley. That shot from Zika off the flick on header was blocked. I couldn't see if it was a save by the goalie or blocked by another Brockton player. Good chance for Belmont on their second corner kick. They've been two for two in scoring chances on corners thus far. Boaz to Santos. 
Brockton player has it, sends it through. And now back out, Sadie Taylor. Tries to send the long ball. A little ping pong in the middle here. Osepian comes away with it for Belmont. She's got some running room down the sideline. Dribbles. That's cut off by Manzueta for Brockton. Now Boaz cut off again by Blanchard for Brockton. One of the things I think you really have to give Jimmy, uh, the coach of Belmont, a lot of credit for is the corner kick plays that he's established. It's really been, they've been really dangerous on those special teams. This Zika year. turns, she's double teamed again in the corner. It'll be a goal kick coming out. We've only got about three and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. Belmont winning 1-0, Belmont and Maroon. The Brockton Boxers in white. Sent out, Hosepian controls it to Boaz, tries to send it through, Santos can't quite turn on it. Through ball from Brockton, that's gonna run long and we'll have a Belmont goal kick coming out. The very big guy that got out of the car that was hit, cigarette in his hand, turned around to the kid. I don't know. One thing you'll notice about the Brockton defense, they play, they do not play straight across. They play with almost like a traditional sweeper back there. And I don't know if that's because they... Turnover in the Belmont end, excuse me. Shot from Belmont, the spinner, but Yuval Galani has it. Belmont had a little trouble on the goal kick there, turning it over. Not something they want to do with a one goal lead. Kicked long by Galani. Excuse me, Brian, we had some action oh, there. totally. And we have more action, Anna Santos on the ball. She gets through, takes the shot, save. Kick save right there, looked like a hockey move. Nice shot from Santos. Anya Olmsted did well to come out and cut off the angle. We've got a Belmont throw in deep as the boxers did a good job. I think it's actually Oh, excuse a me, it is a corner kick. I thought Brockton had gotten out, gotten it out for a throw in. So Gray will line up the corner kick. Sends it long. Back out to Gray. She left puts it in for another cross, but it's into the side of the net for a Brockton goal kick. The clock stopped here in Belmont at two minutes. We're on the referee's time as we Wind down to halftime. Belmont still applying pressure, but haven't been able to get that second goal. Brockton does well to win that, at least temporarily, at half field, outnumbered. Santos down the left side again. She stays on her feet after contact. Cuts it back again. This is how she scored. And now back deep, she's still on her feet. The Brockton player is down. Santos looking for some running room, can't do it. We've got a Brockton throw. Cross in from Belmont. Gray tries to turn on it. Use her body to shield it off. Turns through to Lena Marinell. Good job by Brockton. And a couple double teams to cut that off. Kiki Osepian challenges up high. Now Boaz has it. Tries to go back to Hosepian just a little long. We'll have the Belmont throw. Belmont continues to apply pressure as the halftime whistle blows with the Belmont. Marauders leading the Brockton Boxers, one nothing. 
Brian Belmont has to be happy to have the lead, but I think they'd like to have a, a larger lead at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought Belmont was the better team during the first half. I felt like Brockton really didn't have a lot of scoring opportunities that weren't a result of a miscommunication between the backs. I felt like they had that one opportunity in which Yuval came out and kind of two backs didn't know who to go with it and caused a possible um, scoring opportunity. But I, I don't feel like Brockton has really beat the defense. They play one high striker and it's one against four and I don't feel like they've had the build up. I think if Belmont can communicate effectively in the back, I don't think there'll be a lot of scoring opportunities for them. On the other side, defensively, I thought Brockton is doing a really nice job. And one of the things that you see is, like, I feel like they're old-school defense. I feel like they have a, almost like a sweeper that's playing really far behind. And I don't know if that's the style of play. We've never seen Brockton play. Or if they've got the scouting report that Danica's got some wheels. And so if they're even, they might lose that battle because it seems like Today, it's been harder to send those through, ba through balls because they really have their middle defense really playing off. They're not really interested in any sort of offside traps. They're really going to make sure that the play is in front of them and that they can go to side to side so they don't get beat for breakaways. So I think Sarah Yu, when she started, did a nice job. I thought Danica did a great job. I thought Anna Santos gave you some great effort. But there haven't really been a lot of breakaways because Brockton plays that defense where they're really sagging back. And so I think where we've seen our best scoring opportunities, obviously, have been the corner kicks and some of the, the special team plays, which I think Belmont has really, really done a nice job. You can tell that they practice. They get the scoring opportunities. I mean, you know, hitting the post, almost scoring. Like, that has really been Belmont's best opportunities have really been on special teams play. I think you have to give credit to Brockton for showing up to play tonight a, a, away uh, at night under the lights uh, in, a, in a playoff situation. Their defense has been excellent so far. They've, they've really been able to double team to prevent those breakaways, to prevent Belmont speed up front, uh, turning the corner and getting that one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. So I'm sure that uh, Belmont coach Jemmy Kanji will be looking to, you know, crack the code there of the of the Brockton defense, so to speak. Uh, Belmont's had quite a few outside shots, two of which have hit the crossbar. Probably have a good chance to score there if they can cut it back and, and get those shots at the top of the 18. Yeah. And I, you know, and I, I've said it before earlier, they just need to spread Brockton out a little bit more. It seems like it's been fairly bunched, and to Brockton's credit, I think they're winning a lot of the 50-50 balls. I think they're athletic. Um, I've seen a Belmont team tonight that's starting to move, but they've had more turnovers tonight than I've seen other nights where they're spreading teams out. And so I would like to see them go a little bit more touchline to touchline and spread out Brockton because I think you need them to chase you. And if we're not going up the middle, which I think we started a little bit uh, too much in the game, I think we can actually open this up. And once again, I think the, obviously the second goal in a low scoring game like soccer, it's not a, I mean, it's often said, but I think two nothing like will win this game for um, for Belmont if they can get that goal. I think it will be an easier night. I think, however, if Brockton is able to slide one in, then it's a dogfight to the end. It's a beautiful night here at Harris Field on the campus of Belmont High School. We're at halftime with the Belmont Marauders leading the Brockton Boxers 1-0 in this MIAA playoff matchup. We'll take a break for about five minutes and then come back to bring you the action in tonight's second half. The only thing before we go to break, uh, I think we want to congratulate the Belmont field hockey team for having a 1-0 victory in their opening round of the MIAA tournament over rival Arlington. So I know that as we were coming in, the field hockey team and their fans and their parents were leaving and it was nice to see Belmont 
uh, with a one nothing victory earlier today. So congratulations to the field hockey team. I know there's a lot of field hockey players here supporting the girls. And I, I think the, um, the girls' soccer program, field hockey program, have a really, really nice relationship where they've been in a lot of the, each other's games. So congratulations to the field hockey team for a win earlier tonight. Excellent point. Belmont looking to go two for two in wins on Harris Field tonight. They beat Arlington 1-0 in field hockey just before this game on a goal from Lola Rochi, assisted by Devin Kelleher. Congratulations, Belmont, and good luck in the next round, Belmont Field Hockey. We'll take a break and be back in just a few minutes to bring you the action in the second half. Welcome back to Harris Field for this MIA playoff matchup between the Belmont Marauders and the Brockton Boxers. Rob Gray, along with Brian Merringer, bringing you the action tonight. Brockton in white, Belmont in maroon. We're about to start the second half with Belmont leading 1-0. Looks like Belmont is returning most of its lineup from the first half in. Santos and Zika up front. Marinell at the attacking mid, along with Gray, Boaz, and Yu in the midfield. Across the back, we've got Bosepian, Glavin, Cabril. And Emily McHugh. And McHugh. Way across the field, I couldn't see it. And of course, in goal, Galani sent in by Brockton. Galani is out and grabs it. Potentially dangerous ball, but Galani did the right thing. Kicks it long. She's getting a lot on these punts tonight. Brockton does a good job to jump it and win the ball in the air. Annabelle Cheatham for Brockton. They're right back. Anna Santos, that's probably her third or fourth free kick that she's won tonight. I may have mixed up Cheatham in the first half because she was at the farthest point away from us and she's number six versus number eight. A little bit hard to see, but she did a great job defending there in the first half. Marinell has it, makes a move, beats two players looking for help, sends it out to McHugh, launches a spinner in, headed by Brockton. Back to their goalkeeper. We've got a goalie change. I was, I was going to say, we've for got Brockton. a change for Brockton. It looks like... Isada Conde is in for Brockton. Number double zero into the goal for the second half. Nice job done by Anya Olmstead in the first half. I wonder if that was a plan that they've been splitting the time or if there's an injury because I did feel like the Brockton goalie did a great job during the during the first half. She did and uh, we haven't had the advantage of seeing any Southeast Conference games this year where the Brockton Boxers play so we just don't know. And I think we're both in agreement that one of the things we really enjoy in the tournament is when you get to play someone that you usually wouldn't. You know, I know we had talked about the field hockey team. They got Arlington, great rivalry. But I also think there's something special about facing a team that you've never faced before. Santos has it. She goes down. Could have been a trip, but no call. Marinell holding the ball, looking for somebody, looking for help. Back to Glavin. Good job to win that ball. Now Zika wins it back to Gray. Looking to send it in. She does. Off the Brockton defender, Santos, a nifty little move on the line there and forces a corner kick for Belmont. So an early opportunity, just three minutes into the second half for Belmont to score. They lead one nothing. They'd like to add to that. Gray out on the corner along with Marinell. Brockton sends two players out as well. Marinell lines it up. It looks like a short corner from Belmont. It is short. 
Well, defense by Brockton. They sent two players out. The short play didn't work for Belmont. Gray back to Hosepian. She wins it. Can't connect with Marinell. Gray, good job getting back. As Brockton looked to counterattack with number 10, Hannah Vega. They still have the ball, though. And Brockton's getting their numbers forward. Ball set in. Galani thought about it, but then retreated to the goal, and it runs out long for a goal kick. I'm kind of surprised they went with that corner kick play. Usually you send two out, and if the defense sends two out, then you usually kind of scrap it and play it into the middle of the box. They probably thought with two skilled players, both Bridget and Lena, that they might be able to have something, but I was surprised they went through with the play. Yeah, you'd like to see a, a scoring chance on a corner kick that early in the half. Nice through ball from Lena Marinell. Cross, another cross from Dana Kazika. Anna Santos does a great job to run it down, keep it in bounds. She's got it. She crosses it. Marinell is there but can't control it. Kicked out by the Brockton defender. Throw in, Santos has it, looks to turn. She's closed down by Cheatham. For Brockton, another Belmont throw in to Santos, flicks it on to herself, gets the cross off somehow, scooped up by the goalie, but then lost. Danica turned on it and shot, Danica Zika, but it was wide right, so we'll have a goal kick from Brockton. Excellent opportunity for Belmont there, but they couldn't convert. The one thing I think we've enjoyed about watching Danica this year is she doesn't give up on the play, and she's constantly looking for a bobble by a goalie or something that's going to go awry. And she does a really good job of like keeping plays alive, and she sure did there and almost scored. Marinelle to Gray. Gray sends it through long but cut off. That's Not good. elevated enough. Boaz jumps it, prevents the turn. Robin steps, steps up. Santos, it'll, that'll be a foul. She did a good job to get to that ball. The senior captain Gray will have a chance to loop it in. It's a bit far out near the half, but I have to guess she's trying to drop this in the 18 if she can, inside the 18. Yeah, I think it's a little ambition to try to put this on net. Sends it long, oh. it bounces through, and scooped up by the Brockton goalie. Conde. Great free kick right there. Great, great scoring opportunity. Nice job by the by the Brockton goalie to leave her line and come out there. Gray wins it on the punt. Sends it long into the corner for Santos. Can she get there? She does. And it's off of Brockton for a corner kick. Good job by Santos to keep that long ball in play and set up the corner kick. Gray will take it. Looks like a long kick this time and no short corner play. It's that same play again, dummy run, cut off by Brockton. That was a good read by Campbell Miller, number two for Brockton. She saw Belmont use that play in the first half and she was ready for it. Wonder if at halftime their coach might have might have said something about that because it worked so well during the first half. He might have said, "Look, you know they're going to run some plays. Make sure you're watching out for the dummy run." Checking in for Brockton is the junior number five, Ella Silverman. Cabrillo steps up to win it, but it's turned over back to Brockton. Sent long into the corner. The Belmont defender has to play it out. It was a good run by Amelia Vieira for Brockton to, to almost win that in the corner and put the pressure on. 
Bouncing around in the corner, now set out by Belmont, but nobody's there. Santos tries to get there, controlled by Brockton. They look to reset. Pass outside, turned by Silverman. She's looking for somebody, but scooped up by Galani. I feel like watching Yuval progress, I think one of the things that she's a lot more confident this year is coming off her line to get to those balls. Last year, I felt like she stayed home uh, a little bit more, and this year, I really feel like she's coming out with a lot of confidence and really scooping up the ball before there's some scoring opportunities. It's really been nice to see her mature as a goaltender. Controlled by Marino in the middle to Gray. Cut off by Silverman. She sends it to Boaz coming through. Looks to shoot. I'm not sure if it was deflected. It'll be a goal kick for Brockton. Belmont trying to connect some passes in the middle and fairly successfully early here in the second half. We're 10 minutes in. Much better Belmont start. Leading Much better start this half than it was for the first half. True. Gray steps up, wins it. Yu tries to get there. Works hard to cut that off and force the Brockton player to send it out of bounds. Throwing for Belmont. Another Belmont throw. Brockton steps to the ball again and wins it. Looks like we had a handball there, but no call as the ball loops through. Uh, there was a call, so the handball was called. Late call or the players didn't hear the whistle. We've got a Belmont kick coming in from half field after the Brockton handball. Gray looking for a seam, sends it long. Marinell has it, plays it out wide, but you couldn't get a handle on it. Nice defense by Lucy Cabrillo there for Belmont. Belmont's done a nice job all year of stepping to the ball. Very rarely have you seen opponents be able to turn and make a move. They've done a really nice job of either stepping up and getting to the ball or being in the right position so when that player does turn, they're right there for the tackle. And I don't know if that's something they've been working on uh, throughout the year, but I just feel like it's a real strength of the defense is not allowing people to come and turn. Brockton's on the march here into Belmont's end with a series of throw-ins. McHugh tries to clear it, but it's blocked by Brockton. Now sent back into the corner. And we'll have a goal kick. Threat averted. It's nice to see a good crowd here for the uh, tournament game. We've seen a lot of, of the uh, student section filling up. Friday night under the lights, beautiful weather here in Belmont. Chance for Brockton. Hosepian has it. One back again by Brockton. Silverman looks to shoot but can't. Sent in, Galani's gonna take that. So Belmont ranked 25 in the MAA tournament. We've got three Middlesex League teams in the top 15 and five in the top 26. So Belmont plays in very strong conference as Santos controls it at midfield to Marinell. Looking long for you, gets a head on it, but it'll go out of bounds. Belmont used to stiff competition in the regular season. They're facing some stiff competition here tonight from Brockton. By all accounts, plays in a weaker conference than the Middlesex based on, based on the rankings, but has been playing very tough here tonight. 
Yeah, I think sometimes you you just think that the best soccer is in and around, you know, the 128 belt loop, but Brockton's acquitted themselves very nicely tonight, and you go into some of those pockets of other places in Massachusetts, there's great soccer being played. Lita Marinell takes it down in the middle, gets off a quick shot. Save Brockton. Bit of a surprise shot there from Marinell. She did well and was left alone in the middle and said, why not? Osepian sends it up the left side. It'll run out. Belmont D's up on the throw. Red throw coming back. Good defense by Hosepian. Long throw. Gray makes a run through. Can she get there? She cuts it off. Left footed cross. And thought we might get a corner there, but Brockton's able to send it out for a Belmont throw. Gray did a good job there, knowing that there's no offsides on throw ins and made a long run. Almost turned it into something. I just want to put out a um, huge thanks to whoever that ball girl is. She's really working hard <laughs> down there. Boaz looking to make the play. She does. But there's another Brockton play there. Now Marinell. Belmont really fighting in the middle. Brockton two. There's a fight for control in the midfield. That's where this, the battle of this half has mostly been, been played. Both teams doing a good job, very aggressive. Sent through, Glavin steps up, sends it long back into the Brockton end. Quite a battle down the left side between Annabelle Cheatham for Brockton and Anna Santos for Belmont, their goal scorer. Two players facing off and working very hard and competing uh, in both halves. Last two minutes I feel like has been played in a 10 yard box. Osapian well, denies the turn, sends it through. That's gonna be a foul. It's a good spot for Belmont to Get a chance to feed a ball into the box. Bridget Gray on for the kick. Sends it long, but right to a Brockton player and out. Couldn't find a maroon shirt in there. I think she was a club too short right there. Probably so. Gray controls it back to Hosepian. She's through, looking long. Cut off by Cheatham. Now Glavin sends it long. Good chance for Belmont here. Zika on the ball, keeps it in, cross back. Nice play by the Brockton goalie to step out before Belmont could get ahead on it and cut it off. But what I liked where you had a bunch of maroon shirts going to that far. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Yes. a miscue. Santos is there to pick up the miscue. It knocks it right in the goal. Her second goal tonight, and Belmont takes a 2-0 lead. You know, you love to see the goal for Belmont, but you always feel a little bit bad for a miscue, something like that happening. And let's be fair, Conde made a great save just before that play that probably prevented a Belmont goal. That's the way the ball bounces sometimes. We have 22.51 remaining here in the second half with the Belmont Marauders leading the Brockton Boxers 2-0 in this MIAA playoff contest. You hear the announcement from the stadium announcer, the goal from number 22, the sophomore Anna Santos, her second goal tonight unassisted. Brockton looks to recoup in the Belmont offensive end, but it's looped up by Josepian, and there's Santos again. She's on it, nice play. The ref whistles a foul, it'll be a Brockton kick coming back in. 
Yeah, I think that was a fair call. It's lined up by the junior Bianca Reynoso sends it into the Belmont box. It's through, but Galani collects it a little bobble. Nice play from Brockton there, not a bad chance. Galani punts it out over midfield, a nice punt. Off of Zika, back to you. Good step by Samantha Blanchard for Brockton to keep it headed towards the Belmont goal. Down the line, Cabrillo steps up and knocks it out of bounds. All right, Rob, we'll have to see if we were right. We kind of said, you know, if Belmont could get to two, we felt pretty good. Yeah, Brockton's controlling it now, but it looks like it must have gone over the line. We've got a sub, number 25, sophomore Lucy Hines in for Belmont. Checking out is the sophomore Sarah Yu. Just as in the beginning of the game, Sarah Yu had a, a nice run in there for the first 20 minutes of this half. Looped in, Galani is out collects it. The winner of this match will, will face number eight, Franklin, at Franklin, Monday at 4 p.m. as the MIA playoffs get underway. A little bit of pinball in the middle. Josepian looks for Gray, they can't quite connect. Lavin steps up, Belmont would like to settle this down and Evie Boaz does, good pass to Bridget Gray. She looks to control, double teamed. Good step by Brockton. Bouncing ball here. through, here comes Danica Zika and Anna Santos, they team up, Santos has it. Well defensed and out by Brockton Hosepian. Looking for Santos, that'll be a foul. And Belmont will have a chance about 33, 34 yards out. I, I'd like to see it put it on frame right now. I mean, the goalies dropped a couple, and I say put it on frame and crash the goalie. She does kick it on. It is on frame. Oh, and a nice save by Conde. She just tips it over the bar. That was headed for the top left corner on a very nice strike from Bridget Gray. She'll now make the long run to take a corner kick as senior captain Lily Duffy checks in for Belmont along with sophomore Lily Hosepian. But first we'll have a timeout. When we come back, Belmont will line up a corner kick. That was a great chance for Belmont there. Uh, Bridget Gray lofted it right towards the left corner. Uh, great, great shot and a great save by the Brockton goalie Conde. Yeah, now you have a corner. I don't know if the timeout right now for the, you know, I'm guessing that this kind of fulfills two things. The timeout is by the Belmont coach who really usually uses all his timeouts. So in high school soccer, you get a timeout each half. And I think, I think the Belmont coach has done an excellent job all year of either calling a timeout to run a play, change a formation, um, to give his kids a break. I think he's done a really good job, and I'm thinking right now he's either drawing up a play or he's telling his, his team, look, we're 18 minutes from moving on. Like, you got to think defense first, and maybe he's telling his midfield, especially on the wings, that they need to sag a little bit more. Right now, great opportunity. They could ever get the third goal. Fantastic. But if not, let's not be in a position where we're gambling to score because right now even though Brockton has had some offense, they really haven't had a lot of great scoring opportunities and I think as long as they sag back, I think it should be pretty good. It looks like number 20, Samia Fernandez is checked in for Brockton. Not sure if there are other substitutes. We'll, we'll bring those to you if we can track it down. 
the senior Bridget Gray lining up the corner kick as we restart after the timeout with 1846 remaining in this contest. And if you look right now, four, all four backs from Belmont are back. They usually send, uh, they usually keep three back. It looks like it was a play. It didn't work, sent back in. It was cut off by Brockton, then sent back in by McHugh. And now out, Brockton looks to counter attack, but Glavin sends it back in to snuff that out. Lily Hosepian working in the corner to win it. She does win it. Looking for the cross, but cut off by a second Brockton defender. And we're gonna have another corner kick here for Belmont. They're gonna need to have some more plays. Well, there is the old fashioned kick it to the top of the six yard box and head it in. But we haven't seen too much of that this year. Emily McHugh making a far post right It is here. looped in. Nice play by the goalie. No, this is a this is an interesting call. I think they're gonna call they're that gonna a goal. Call a goal. The because goalie. the goalie moved the ball actually over the goal line. And what I think she's maintaining is that she got pushed, but it looked like right there she made a nice catch, but she just turned into the goal. And as long as the ball is over the goal line, it's a goal. Yeah, it is a goal for Belmont, and uh, unfortunate because it, it was a good play by Conde, the Brockton goalie, to take that out of the air and win it. I think when she came down, she stepped on a Belmont player and got off balance. Yeah. Um, and she was, you know, definitely being jostled by the number of players around here, her, and somehow the ball, when she twisted, crossed the goal. Belmont controls, they now lead three nothing with 17 minutes remaining in the game. Gray has it in the middle, chips it through, but that's a turnover. Brockton sends it out of bounds, Belmont will still control it. I'm not sure who'll get credit for that goal, whether it's Bridget Gray who kicked it or the closest Belmont player to the ball, Brian, but it's just one of those fluky goals that, that Belmont benefits from. Or they might just say it's an own goal and not give anyone credit for it. It could that. be, it yeah. could be. Um, nice kick by Gray. She put it in a dangerous area and something good happens. Yeah. Not the traditional head or volley into the goal that we might like to see, but but it worked. Hosepian steps up, wins it to Gray. She's gonna play it through. Belmont's looking for more goals. Lily Hosepian now. Left back Kiki Hosepian's sister. On the ball, she wins it. She crosses it back. Lily Duffy's there. Sends it. Oh, wide. A really great pit play by Lily Hosepi in there to win it in the corner, beat the goalie, make a nice cross back to the middle. It was an off speed ball, and Lily Hosepi just couldn't quite collect it and knock it into the back of the net. Off-speed ball is a nice way of putting it. It was a slow roller. <laughs> and the shot was a slow roller. We weren't sure that she hadn't tucked it in the corner uh, from Duffy. Uh, Sadie Taylor is... So the goal's been credited on the corner kick. Belmont's third goal to Bridget Gray. Uh, she took the corner that eventually went into the goal uh, as it crossed the plane. Now Gray lines up another one. Another looper in. Uh -oh. Duffy gets a head on it. Nice save by Conde to keep it out of the goal. Sadie Taylor has checked in for Belmont. To left mid, Bridget Gray has moved back to the holding mid as Evie Boas has checked out. I'm not sure if she might have taken a little, little ding, limping a bit, so. Belmont makes the adjustment. And we're gonna have another corner. Yeah, I think you'll start seeing, or I ho hope you'll start seeing going to the bench a little bit more. You know, you have a tough game now, and I think we can talk as the game's gonna happen, four o'clock in Franklin. You're up three nothing. Um, 
but you want to make sure that you don't twist an ankle or something right now for some of your players who are in the game. Here comes and the corner, looped in by Gray to the penalty oh. spot, volleyed by Hines, shot blocked by Brockton. Hines got some good wood on it, but a Brockton player was there to keep it out of the goal. Nice defense. I also think, just back to my point, this is a great opportunity to give kids some tournament experience right now and to get them in so that they can play in the tournament. It's obviously the last home game for Belmont. They'll be on the road for the rest of them. So for some of the seniors, it will be their last chance to play here at the high school. And in fact, uh, two Belmont subs are at the tee now, ready to come in. Dana Lair and Ruby Jones, they haven't checked in yet. Oh, now they will on the Belmont throw. Jones in for Lena Marinell. And Lair for senior Emily McHugh. Hard fought by both those players tonight. Unless Brockton's able to score here, you have to think that, that they're done for the night to rest up for Monday's likely game away at Franklin. If Belmont's able to secure this 3-0 win. We're going to have another corner kick for Belmont. It has to be, Brian, I, I haven't been keeping count, but it has to be Belmont's 11th or 12th corner. That, Easily double digits. Yeah, they've really kept the pressure down there, and... They've had a lot of scoring chances on, on corners. I mean, they did score on one, their third goal. And uh, now Gray lines up another one. It's a long kick in again. It might go in the goal on its own. Taylor takes the shot. It looked like it was going in the goal. It was kept out by the back post player for Brockton. Effectively, Taylor had a go at it on the rebound, but couldn't quite score. I think if that back post player hadn't been there, it would have it would have gone into the side panel. Gray had sort of put the banana on it, and it was curving in. We've got a goalie change for Belmont. Senior Yuval Galani is coming out. She had a good game, replaced by senior goalie Kate Grimble. And what was nice was we didn't know if Yuval would be able to play tonight. In fact, she was uh, she was questionable at the beginning of the game, and I don't think she made the decision. The decision wasn't made till warm-ups. So there was a chance that she wasn't going to play tonight, and I thought she did a great job of controlling the penalty box tonight, coming out, making sure she was really owning the box and did a really nice job. She did, and... Uh was probably most effective in uh, preventing Brockton from getting chances by cutting off some of those through balls. Didn't have to make a lot of uh, reaction saves. Brockton didn't get a lot of shots, but Galani was very effective. Duffy on the ball for Belmont, she wins it. Tries to keep it in, but can't quite. Brockton throw, We've got a Brockton Sub coming in. Sent in deep. Will it stay in? No, it rolls out for a goal kick. You know, I think Brockton, we, we had said earlier, acquitted themselves pretty well tonight. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of hustle, a lot of won a lot of the 50-50 balls. I think they did a really nice job. I think in the end, Belmont was a little bit more talented, and that's why they're walking away with the 3-0 win. But Brogdon got off to a really great start tonight. Uh, it was a very even game for the first 20 minutes. No question about it. And I know we all often don't um, say this enough. I also think the referees have had a good night. I haven't really noticed them or any calls that they've missed, yep. and I think they've done a nice job as well. So. One of the things that happens in the tournament is that the officials are, are bouncing from tournament game to tournament game. I know some of the better officials they have do during some of the tournaments, and I think they've done a nice job tonight. So just a little shout out to the team in yellow. So Aliana Texera has checked in for Brockton, uh, along with Carmina Vincent Charles. Uh, 
Checking in for Belmont is Allie Caputo, the junior midfielder. Although it looks like she's going to be playing up at forward. Comes in for Duffy. Gray sends it through to Ruby Jones. One by Brockton. Cabrillo takes care of business, sends it out. Nice pass by Hines to Jones. She's down, but no call. Caputo, now Taylor. Hines looking for the through ball. Looper in. Lavin does a good job to head it out. Now Cabrillo. Hines settles it down to Jones. Tries to go back to Hines. Hosepian, Lily Hosepian's on the ball. Finds Hines. Some good ball movement by Belmont. Caputo looking to slip it through to Hosepian and sort of does after Ruby Jones collision. Hosepian working in the corner against number three, Lucia Jesta, who also checked in for Brockton. We're approaching eight minutes left in this contest. Belmont leading 3-0. Against the Brockton boxers. Some additional players warming up on the sideline for Belmont right now. As this contest winds down, Jones. It goes through, Hosepian has room. Takes a look at what she's got. Plays the outlet to Taylor. Back to Hosepian, can't quite connect. Jones is in. Now Brockton's on the ball with a counter. Taylor does a good job of running that down. Brockton players down, but it was a clean play. Taylor just out hustled there. Caputo on the ball, wins it back. Looking for help. Through ball, Brockton player down, no call. Hines has it in the corner, plays it out to Taylor, turns back to Hines, excuse me, not Hines. Lucy uh, Cabral. Lucy Cabral, the other Lucy. That's off Belmont, we'll have a Brockton throw. Taylor sends it out. Now Caputo looking for Hines, not quite. Hines, good effort to win it back. Okay, thought there might have been a foul there, but it turns out it's a throw in. Or maybe it looks is like a foul. Looks like she's still down. It's tough to see, it's on the far side of the field. So, Belmont, <laughs> Player down, Lucy Hines uh, had a strong bump into the Brockton player. We'll have a time stoppage with 6-11 left in this contest as the Belmont trainer goes to check on her. You know, while well, Lucy's down right, Round, uh, down on the ground right now. I just did want to mention that Belmont does have a player, number 17, um, Val, who's, who was a defender this year. Unfortunately, it looks like she has an ACL injury that she had a, had a few weeks ago. She's an excellent rugby player and was trying out for like the junior national team. And I know that she is Unfortunately, going to need surgery soon, and we just wanted to wish her the best, obviously, Absolutely. with her recovery. Absolutely, and Lucy Hines is up and limping a little bit, but looks to be okay. She'll take a ride in the golf cart back to the Belmont bench, but glad to see her up. Belmont's got a few players lined up to check in. The junior midfield fielder Jane Caputo, uh, one of two uh, sister duos on the Belmont team along with the Hosepians. Uh, senior forward Molly Plunkett and uh, senior defender Becca Lloyd. They're at half field and ready to check in. 
we'll see when the referee waves them in. It was, in fact, a foul on Brockton. And a free kick for Belmont on the restart with 6-11 remaining in this one. Belmont leading 3-0. Caputo does check in for the injured Hines. Gray sends it long towards Josepian. It'll bounce out of bounds for a Brockton throw. Jones challenges but can't win it. Now Belmont does, Ali Caputo has it. Nice ball in, Sadie Taylor on the run. Nice hustle to get there. She's got two on. Now Ruby Jones back to Caputo. That'll be a foul. Yeah. In, inadvertent, but a collision nonetheless, and uh, Brockton kick coming out. Sent long into the corner, Hosepian tracking. Brockton player on the ball. It's out off of Hosepian. That was number 11. Indiana Andre, the senior for Brockton. Brockton throw into the box. It's called an illegal throw. Foul throw, Belmont throw coming out again. And we think we're going to have a couple subs here for Belmont. The senior, Molly Plunkett. And Becca Lloyd and coming in. Kiki Hosepian also a senior. coming out tonight. Nice job at the left back for Kiki yeah. Josepian and also coming out Lucy Cabriel. Great job at the uh, center back position. Looks like we've got a foul on Belmont and we'll have a Brockton kick coming in from a dangerous spot. Bianca Reynoso lining it up for Brockton. Only 4-10 remaining in this playoff contest. Nice ball. Sent in hard on goal. It knuckled a bit. It, at first it looked like it had a chance to go on goal. I don't know if it was deflected. And then it took a dangerous bounce near the far post. Good opportunity for Brockton to score, but uh, they couldn't get a white player on the end of it. Short kick played out by Lloyd. To Lair, plays it up the side, off of White. In a Belmont throw. So as we come to the come to the close here, it's about three and a half minutes. Um, you know, good solid win for, for Belmont. I think obviously a, a much more challenging game coming up here against Franklin on, on Monday. Um, we said at the beginning of the, the broadcast, we hope that Sabrina Sauls is resting up and feels a lot better on, on Monday. I think that'd be great if that she could come back and play in, play in the midfield. I think they'll need her on Monday. Break Chance right for Brockton. And I think that they'll need her. Into her. the side of the net. Goal kick coming out, excuse me. Yeah, I think they'll I think they'll need her obviously on Monday. So it's it's nice that she'll have a chance to to come and play. I thought you got some good energy today. I mean, I, I think if you probably had a person of the match, you'd probably have Anna Santos with the first two goals uh, of tonight. I thought she gave you great energy off the bench. And I do feel like this was a team win and a, a nice way for a lot of these kids to uh, have the last game this season here at Harris Field. And there's 13, 14 seniors on here. Obviously a nice chance for them to end it well and walk off the field tonight. Yeah, Belmont, it looks like, is going to go two for two on Harris Field this evening with the girls' varsity field hockey winning their playoff contest 1-0 against Arlington just prior to kickoff here tonight. And the girls' varsity soccer marauders looking at a 3-0 victory with just under two minutes remaining here against the Brockton Boxers. The boys uh, program is also traveling to Franklin for um, their first tournament game as well. So, Yes, and I, I believe also on Monday, so we may have a, a Belmont at Franklin 
doubleheader in, in varsity soccer playoffs on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Throwing for Brockton as time ticks down. Chance to get through, Brockton on the ball. Stopped by Plunkett. She cut it off, did a good job. It would have been one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, but it did hit her hand, and now we're gonna have a, sh a kick for Brockton from a dangerous area. Bianca Reynoso, the junior. Lines it up, you have to think she'll be shooting from here, Brian. Yes, I, I would think so. She strikes it. Hard in. And just and it's a goal. Near post. Uh, it was very similar to the goal for Belmont. First goal for Belmont that Anna Santos had. Uh, it, it was driven right inside the near post. And it had looks like oh did that go into the side of the net or did it go in and it went in yeah. uh, nice shot by the junior Bianca Reynoso to make it three to one as Brockton gets on the board with probably only about a minute left in this game Gray plays it through Brockton feeling some adrenaline from that goal putting more pressure on Belmont Driving in, the shot off of Glavin, and it's going to be out for a corner. The Brockton so, coach making sure everyone's coming up here for the last. So what I would think as I look at my watch, there's probably about 30 seconds left, maybe not there. You're seeing the official looking at his watch. I, I believe this will be maybe the last play uh, of the game. We don't know because the time isn't on the scoreboard. It's kept by the referee on the field. The corner kick is up. Driven through off a of Belmont player. Shot by Brockton, but wide left. Brockton still controls it. Shot in. Save. Grimble. Oh, but now it's a goal. Grimble made the save. No, no, no. no. I, I, I'm not sure. Oh, it's coming back. It looks like yeah. it was offside. Yes. Grimble made the save. It bounced. The Brockton player alertly headed it in, but she was in an offside nice position. position. Yes. So it's still three to one, no goal. Gray taking her time as she should. She kicks it out long and wide. And the seconds tick off. The final whistle is blown and the Belmont Marauders have beat the Brockton Boxers three to one. An MIAA home playoff win for the Marauders here at Harris Field in Belmont as they celebrate in front of the goal. An excellent team win this evening. Uh, two goals from the spark plug, really, for Belmont. Anna Santos gets Belmont on the board twice. A third goal added by Bridget Gray on a corner kick. Brockton scored late to make it 3-1, to one, but Belmont really controlled this game after the first 20 minutes, Brian. Yeah, I, I thought so. It was a little bit of a kind of slower start, but I felt like once Be Belmont settled down, did a nice job, were able to get a lot of scoring opportunities. Once again, there. Uh, corner kick plays really did a did a great job. Any of their special teams, and I thought their defense did a nice job of really stepping up the ball. I don't think until that last kind of five to ten minutes there were a lot of scoring opportunities that were there, and I thought Belmont really did a nice job against Franklin. The communication is going to have to be great in the back, and they're going to have to make sure they're stepping up. So it would be interesting to see how they play Monday. It was a, a blast working the uh, microphone with you here today. Absolutely. And, um, and it, as both teams line up to shake hands, I think we have to say it was a very clean contest, good sportsmanship by both teams. Uh, hard fought, I think, but uh, just tough play. Uh, no, no uh, excessive fouls or anything else. A clean contest. Both teams fought hard, and Belmont was just the the better team this Friday evening, Brian. Yeah, I, I agree. And you, you know, someone season in always has to end now once you're in the playoffs, and it's it's nice when the, you can kind of walk out with your heads held high that it wasn't a chippy game, it wasn't one-sided, it was a good effort, and so Brockton. As we said, they have a lot of freshmen. Hopefully next year is it a, a, another step forward to them and they have a good season. And for, for Belmont, 
senior related team and it's nice to see them get their win a playoff win on their home field now they have to go on the road for as long as they can that's brian marriger i'm rob gray this has been a belmont media center broadcast of belmont girls varsity soccer the marauders with a 3-1 miaa playoff win tonight's home contest against the Brockton Boxers. Thanks for joining us. Good luck to the Marauders on Monday against Franklin.